Okay, my name is Adam Vans, and I work here at Bayes Mountain Park and Planetarium. I'm the Planetarium Director. I've been working here for 15, over 15 years, uh, but uh, as director for about two. And uh, this is Jason, I'll let him introduce himself. I'm Jason Dorfman, I'm also working here in the Planetarium, and I've been here for about a year and a half. And uh, we're... We started elsewhere. Well, right, I've been in the field for a few years, but uh, it, at Bayes Mountain for about a year and a half. The, uh, um, we are doing a big project, probably the biggest one we'll do while we work here at Bayes Mountain. Um, we are totally refurbishing this planetarium theater. This theater is um, started in 1972, I believe, and so it is time to replace equipment you know, due to age and just uh, so much use, which is actually a good sign because we have used it uh, very well for many years. And now it's time to uh, go to uh, a new technology and new equipment. And uh, what you see is a big mess behind us. But uh, what we're going to be doing is essentially replacing almost everything here. Uh, the building will stay. The framework for the dome behind us will be staying. But everything else pretty much goes. We'll be getting a new screen on the dome. We're going to have in the center of our theater a new star projector system. But unlike the original system, it's going to be two components. The first and most major component is the optical star projector. It is from Zeiss. Uh, the model is the ZKP4 for those following along. And uh, it has fiber optics for each and every individual star, which means that every star will be very tiny, very bright, and accurate in brightness and it's going to be really spectacular. But the benefit also of that is that the machine itself will be a fraction of the original machine that uh, used to be here. So it's not going to be in the way as the older, larger machine used to be. The other half of the system is what's called full dome video. And it is a combination of just about everything else that we would use to provide visuals for uh, projecting onto our dome. And that means um, digital stars, if we wanted to have a three-dimensional star database, uh, we can create, recreate um, a three-dimensional solar system, galaxy, universe, in which we would be able to fly around uh, and through and be really exciting. Uh, it, will allow, uh, it will allow us to also provide other visuals that we create, either in-house as far as 3D animation or even just photography and place it up on the dome, anywhere on the dome, visual or still, anywhere. And that's a big exciting difference between what we used to have with slide projectors where it just showed on one section of the screen and it just sit there. Uh, so we'll be able to immerse our audience into uh, this exciting new technology. Um, but uh, I'm gonna let Jason talk about the audio system. <laughs> Well, yes, uh, another big part of the new theater will be a new audio system. It will be a 5-1 surround sound system, uh, which will go uh, nicely with the full dome video. Um, as a visual is flying past you, we will be able to have the audio uh, follow that visual and uh, really as well as immersing you in a visual environment, we will also be immersing you in an audio environment with the surround sound. So that'll be another big improvement inside the theater. Yes, it will. And more than just the 5.1 audio, we're going to have an audio quality that is um, possibly unsurpassed in this region. It is going to be exceptional. Yes. Uh, we're very excited about this. Um, we are stretching every dollar that we get from the city of Kingsport for this project. As you can see, all the material that, you'll see all the visuals where everything's been taken out. That was by staff that did that. We didn't hire a crew to do that. So um, we're doing everything we can to uh, make use of every one of those dollars and to provide the highest quality uh, theater environment uh, for Bays Mountain Park, for the city of Kingsport, for the region, and uh, we're, it's going to be really exciting. Um, other things that we're replacing, the seats. Um, you can imagine they were installed in 1971, actually. And so, even older. <laughs> yes, they're even older. And so imagine how worn they are, and they are. Um, 
The, we're going to have a new sloped floor that will uh, glide up. Uh, you won't have any steps, so it'll be really easy to find a seat, but also immerse yourself even more within our projected system. Um, we'll also be doing some new construction as well. We'll be changing right. how you enter the theater yes. and opening up the entryway and uh, creating a new hallway to come in so that you actually come in the front of the theater instead of the back like in the past. That's right. Yeah. So that's going to be <clears throat> very important to us because it's going to change how we actually give presentations. If you see behind us, right behind us, this big console. Well, this is the that was the standard of planetariums from the you know from the 30s up until about now, when there'd be a person behind the console and he'd have 190 buttons that did everything, and they you know were this faceless voice. Well, that doesn't uh, quite work anymore. Um, people are much more excited about a program when there's an actual live person in front of them talking to them and interacting with them. And so what we will have is a very small desk up in the front, but we won't even stay back there. Everything's going to be mobile. We'll be able to control the system wirelessly. We could sit next to somebody in the audience and run a show if we really wanted to, and it's going to be really neat. And um, it'll provide for a much more one-on-one -on -one experience and uh, a really great time uh, for those that visit. The project is going to be running through the summer and um, we'll probably finish in, we hope, an early fall. But uh, I'd say somewhere around in the fall time is when we will reopen and um, there will be a lot of press coverage and a lot of excitement. We are working, <clears throat> we are working on a new program right now for our uh, gala opening, our big show as we call it, behind the scenes. And I uh, don't want to give anything away about it, but um, it's going to highlight not only the purpose of this theater, which is education and astronomy or, and space sciences, but it's also going to be highlighting nature, which is the other half of this park, and um, also highlighting the technologies that have been installed in this theater. So it's going to be an untraditional program for us but we hope to be very exciting and to, uh, you know, just to kind of show off all the uh, neat stuff that we've got for, um, for all the future programs to be using. The Planetarium Theater, the original one for Bayes Mountain Park, um, was actually an afterthought. It was originally to be, this room was supposed to be an auditorium. And um, upon construction of the building, they realized, hey, we could put a Planetarium Theater in here. And so this elevator door was put in and a shaft for an elevator was also installed. But uh, once they finally got the projector system in here, the, um, they didn't put the elevator in. So we have this elevator door here, which nobody has seen because um, it's covered over by the main instrument. And so uh, I don't know if anybody's realized that, there, that this was actually here. So. Um, uh, it's truly behind the scenes. The new floor for the theater that we're installing is going to be sloped up and all of this will be uh, totally underneath. So um, nobody will see any of this material, this original floor at all. Um, our new projector will not have a main elevator system, but um, um, that's still okay because of the size of the system. The theater, because of the size of the projector is so small, we don't really have to duck it out of the way we have, say, a live speaker. Why is there an elevator shaft in here? Well, if you had an elevator, the purpose of it was to drop the machine down out of the way, at least at floor level so you could work on it, or all the way down below the floor so that you would have nothing in the way, so it could be like a regular uh, auditorium. Um, so uh, a number of theaters do have elevators. Um, we just have the shaft. Up here, we have the cove lighting system. This area that you see that goes, that wraps all the way around the theater is called the cove. And behind it, you can have specialty lighting that washes the dome with a color. Now, our original system, as you can see, are just these little blue bulbs. And um, they are very low wattage, 
So they're not very bright, but when you have about 100 or so all the way around, you end up washing the dome with a blue light. It's very effective, it's very nice. Um, but all we were able to do is just fade them up or fade them down, and it's just blue. The new cove lighting that we're going to be having installed is LED lighting, not incandescent like this. So there's a lot of benefits with it. First of all, power consumption is a fraction. Also, heat is almost a fraction of what an incandescent would produce. But the big benefit is that it's three color LED, which means we can put any color up here that we want. Purples, yellow, green, it doesn't matter. We can wash the dome with any of these colors. And we're going one step further. We're gonna have what's called the advanced system, which means that um, each small section of LED lighting will be separately programmable. So we could have lights chasing around uh, or only in one section have a lighting in one area or a couple different areas. Whatever we want to do, we can control it with any color and brightness and in anywhere around the dome and the perimeter as well. So that's a big, big plus and um, it's going to be pretty cool because it's going to add uh, a whole new level of um, visual uh, for our theater. Now, since this project has been announced, I've been getting many questions, as well as Adam, about what exactly is going to happen to these great old chairs and the old spaceship lights. We've been a lot of people asking about these spaceship lights. Now, if you grew up coming to the planetarium, you're probably very familiar with these spaceship lights. They used to be along the front of the planetarium theater and were incorporated into some of our day camp shows, as well as some of our other school group shows when we gave the kids sort of a spaceship ride through the solar system and uh, pretended that they were on a spaceship. Now the seats and the spaceship lights and many of the old equipment in the planetarium uh, is all going to city surplus. So someday it may be for sale to you and uh, so keep your eyes open and you might be able to take home this lovely set of spaceship lights. Up in the cove system, in addition to the cove lighting, are uh, from the past other special effects. They could be uh, a meteor shower effect or some other specialty lighting, but also what's called panorama uh, projection. And um, those of you old enough will remember what these are, it's slide projectors. And a slide projector um, projected only one slide, but it allowed us with seven more of these to fill the perimeter of the dome with visuals. So we could create a panorama of Mars or uh, your backyard or just about anything you'd want or even other visuals. The, um, and so the good thing was you could provide the visual around the dome. The bad thing was it didn't move, it just sat there. And um, there was a, it was very difficult to create a panorama image. The new system will be able to take any image we want, place it into our computer system, and it automatically will just paste it up there, and we have a panorama. If we create one with a 3D environment, uh, we'll have, uh, we, can, we can do anything we want. We can make it seem like we're flying across the surface of Mars, or um, well, just about anything you want. You know, we can have trees swaying, so it adds a lot more dimension to our, some of our effects. Um, the old planetarium theater automation system was a pretty interesting system. It, uh, we had a set of um, knobs and buttons that we could actually take what we call patches of uh, basically a power cable that would go from one point to another and then it would go up into in the cove area or behind our consoles where we could say turn that effect on and control its brightness and actually turn on the motor. And they would be connected by these. These are called cinch these are called cinch Jones plugs. And uh, if you look at them carefully, uh, like this six, it's keyed where the spacing is a little bit more over here than here, so there's only one way to plug them in. Some of them had a full 120 volts running through them. Some only had low voltage running through it, but it also had um, commands that could go through there, basically a vol low voltage that would say turn on or turn off, and um, depending on the effect. So we would have these cables running everywhere for the old automation system. And uh, this goes back to uh, Spitz technology 
um, probably back to the 50s, I would say, when this was developed and used up through the uh, 70s, 80s at least. So kind of a, another behind the scenes. Well, while the theater is closed and all this construction and renovation is happening, there will be lots of other things that Adam and myself will be doing. Um, he mentioned a little bit about the public show, the first public show that we will be developing. In addition to that, we also have to develop all our school programming um, because all of our old school programming uh, will not work in the new theater. So that is an important part that we will be taking on while this construction is happening. Uh, a lot of people don't realize uh, how many different programs we actually do in addition to the public programs. We do have a separate program for most of the elementary grade levels and so we will be working on many of those shows while we are closed down and that involves a lot of uh, pr production aspects and, as well as matching up educational requirements for the certain grade levels and meeting all those needs. Now, there are also uh, several other programs that will be going on here at Bays Mountain Park while the theater is closed. Um, we still have our observing programs out at our observatory. We have our Sun Watch program, which is our solar observing, and that happens every Saturday and Sunday at 2.45 until 3.30, and that'll run all the way through November. We also have our nighttime public observing program. That is currently happening on Saturday evenings, and it's during the months of March and April, and then again in October and November. And it starts at, just when it starts to get dark, we say at dusk. Uh, right now, that's about 8 o'clock. And uh, when we get into April, it'll be about 8.30. So you can definitely still come out for those pr both of those observing programs. Now, in addition to those observing programs, we will also have a 1.30 program on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, that will be down in our Discovery Theater. And that will be a program about what stars, constellations, and planets are visible in our nighttime sky for that time of year, as well as an update on what is happening with the Planetarium Theater, what, where we are in the renovation and what all the plans are, a little bit more detail than we've given you here, along with some visuals. That's right. Um, so we're going to have lots of programming. And all the programming he mentioned about the solar viewing, the nighttime viewing, and the, the 130 programs, those are all free. So um, there's a lot of activities that you can do that are astronomy related, that there's no charge uh, once you're in the park. Uh, for the star watches, since they start um, at or after when the park closes officially, there is no charge even to enter if you come for just the star watch program. So a lot of opportunities. Um, and uh, another thing to mention is that uh, we are also in the midst of a fundraising program for the Planetarium Theater. Yes, we have a good amount of money for this project and uh, everything should be covered, but there's still ongoing costs that go on for years and years. And so we're hoping to develop a fund uh, that we can access in those coming years. So there's a lot of opportunities for uh, just about anybody to um, um, basically make a donation or help support the planetarium all the way down from $25 and up and we have a couple of different levels for that so uh, if you want to uh, help us out then that would be great. And as always the, all this information is on our website so you can go to our website www.baysmountain.com and you'll be able to find the information about these funding uh, areas levels that you can participate in. And uh, I don't know if we want to get into the more specifics, but we do have an Adopt-A-Star program uh, similar to our Adopt-An-Animal program here at the park. And what that is, is you can adopt a bright star in our new planetarium star field. And we will also be uh, selling uh, the chairs in the new theater. Uh, so you can do sort of a memorial, uh, get a plaque uh, associated with a chair in our new theater. And uh, there are several other ways that you can help out, including uh, helping us with show sponsorship. Um, as we mentioned, we do a lot of our own show production here, and that does take time and energy. And uh, so and if money. you want to help us support um, being able, us being able to produce our own shows and continue that, uh, that quality program in here, you can help out in that way as well. That's right. And for the highest level, uh, we are having uh, special constellation sculptures created for our entranceway. Uh, for the new theater and uh, that would be for very high level support but will be for the life of the theater and so 
Um, that's a very exciting opportunity for a family, a person, or even a corporation or business uh, to have their name associated with that. Another activity that we have uh, related to observing and astronomy is Astronomy Day. That is May 10th this year of 2008, and that means that in addition to our daytime viewing of the sun and also the nighttime viewing of the night sky, we will have more special presentations and activities uh, going on in the afternoon and evening of May 10th, and all of that is free as well uh, once you're inside the park. So, uh, that's a fun program for the entire family. That's May 10th for Astronomy Day. If you go to our website at baysmountain.com, in addition to uh, seeing all sorts of information that's uh, important about the park, we'll also have some behind the scenes photos uh, posted so you can kind of keep up with uh, the progress of what's going on. And as far as our progress right now, um, when this is, this is filmed in the uh, beginning of March, we have the seats out, the star projectors out, it would have been behind us, um, and we're starting to take out the booths, and soon, probably in the next day or so, we're gonna take out the main console. Um, and uh, at, in the near future, in a few weeks, the uh, construction crews will be coming in and putting in uh, walls and taking some other walls out and uh, starting on the new floor. So that's about where we are right now.